Hello? Okay, cool. There we go. Alright, let me test all this out. I'm out of focus, I think. What up, Brooke? Am I in focus? I can't tell. I'm in a different location. I'm in my wife's office because she did a live on YouTube last night. She's doing a uh, Buff Bunny live launch party. What's today? Thursday? On Saturday, so there's no point in me like setting this whole mess up again. So I'm going to show you my view right now. Uh, let me see here. Let me see what I'm looking at. So, currently, this is what I'm looking at. <laughs> got two big lights, a ring light, the camera in the middle of the ring light. We got Bruce Wayne back here, sleeping. They uh, didn't go to the gym today, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. Um, JJ's in my office sleeping, so these lives, it's just better if I just let the dogs be, do what they want to do, it's just easier. Um, that way they're not getting stressed out for, for no reason. Do you want do you guys want me closer? Do you want me farther away? How's that? That good? You tell me. All right. So not so basic Brooke finally caught alive. Glad you're here. Nancy Butler, how you doing, Nancy? What's up everyone? How's everyone doing today? Um, I figured I would kind of just go over Bruce Wayne's injury. Um, spoiler alert, he's acting fine now, but I figured it'd be a good opportunity to kind of just discuss injuries in our dogs, especially giant breed dogs. It's like, I've never had a dog have an injury, then it heals, gets another injury, heals, gets another injury, heals, and I just... That's just due to the fact that he's a giant breed dog and there's so much weight to him and it's so easy for them to get hurt. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity as I drink my cold brew out of my Halloween Horror Nights cup. Which year is this? This was the 30th anniversary of Halloween Horror Nights. Um, me and my wife love Halloween, everything horror. So we go to Universal Studios every year. And uh, I think this 2022 will be year 14 in a row. Kind of crazy. COVID doesn't count. It was closed during COVID. Um, I got my cold brew in here with some ambrosia plant protein um, and some blueberries and almond milk. And it is delicious. So, yeah, I'm going a little different in my cold brew today. But coffee and corsos, we have to have some kind of coffee beverage, right? What's up, everyone? Still say hello to Elgato XO. That's Lexi. She's part of the Cory crew. Um, she is... Uh, she helps care of myself out a ton. That's why she's always modding these. She's, um, she works with us very closely. So show her some love. She makes life better. All right. Do you feel, Nadine, do I feel all right? I'm all right. I'm not stellar, but I'm not horrible. Hello back, Sharna from Australia. Colorado Springs, I need to go visit there. I, uh, Philippe, I do edit my own videos. Um, I'll start on the topic in a minute, but yeah, just real quick. I've My background is like videography, cinematography, editing. I've been doing it for, let me see, I don't want to age myself. Over 25 years. Um, but a lot of my own videos, I don't edit heavily just so I can quickly get them out the door. I used to get stuck in this rut where it's like if it didn't look perfect, if it wasn't like super cinematic, like almost like a movie, I wouldn't put it out. And that was just hindering growth because you guys just want content. Of course, you guys would like it to look as good as possible and edit it as good as possible. But like when I was doing daily, that was just impossible because like I can spend like six hours editing a 10 minute video. Um, so it's just it's. It was really hard for me to break away from like that creative type anal analness in myself where everything had to look perfect. Um, but yeah, I edit everything myself. 
I really want someone. I want to find someone to edit for me, but I've tried and what they've produced has been garbage. Um, because even if it doesn't look cinema, cinema, cinematic, it still needs to flow quick and it still needs to be engaging. Um, and they just, everybody I've hired to edit a video, it's just been trash. Uh, so, so far, I'm stuck editing myself, which definitely slows me down. Not so basic Brook, yeah, see? Uh, not so basic Brook, Stepdaughter is a great day and in the course, though. They're always having issues as well because they're huge, and that's, like, truth. It's When they're growing as puppies, they're going to have issues nine times out of ten. And not even, like, serious issues, but the first-time owner is going to think it's a serious issue, and it's not. It's just could be uh, irregular growth. And by irregular, I don't mean like irregular where it's going to affect them long term. Um, but so, for example, uh, numerous times when Bruce was in his growth spurts, one leg would grow before the other. So it looked like he had a limp because one leg was longer. And then a week later, the other leg balanced out, um, things like that, uh, on top of just being so large and heavy. Uh, Br Alana Bruce Wayne is better. He's good. Nancy, what was wrong with Grimm? Oh my god. Wolfman's got nards. Are you serious? You know Monster Squad? That's like literally my favorite all time movie. I watched it in the movie theater as a kid. Uh, I've been like obsessed with that movie ever since i've probably watched it 30 to 40 times um i need a bruce wayne shirt that says wolfman has nards but it needs to be like bruce wayne as a wolfman if that makes sense uh it needs to be like a really cool drawing of like how bruce wayne would look as a wolfman from the monster squad movie you know old school Thanks, Ronnie B. I'm decently well rested. Uh, all right, I just kind of want to look through these comments before I get started. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, that's kind of how these lives are. It's like I'd just rather be able to communicate with you guys. So I always, I typically have a topic and I'll talk about it for a minute and then I'll just chat with you guys, answer questions. Um, it's 11.45 right now. I don't plan on being on longer than an hour. So I'll go over my topic. Um, Excuse me. Uh, I'll go over my topic. I'll answer questions. Any super ch chat donation questions are going to take priority. And I probably won't get to get to all of your questions. Um, do not spam. If I don't answer a question, it's because I don't want to answer your question. So don't type it out a million times. Lexi will just block you if so. Let me see here. Uh, Justina, JJ's sleeping in the other room. I don't wake the dogs up for lives. It's just rude of me to do so. <laughs> Plus, it stresses them out. They're like, why am I sitting here for nothing? You know? Congrats, Amy, on, the, on your Corso. Nancy, the... I did not miss that yet. I was looking for what happened to Grimm. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, Joseph. Yeah, I'm super careful with the dogs. Uh, no heavy play. 30 minutes. Sometimes more than that. 45 prior to eating and after. You know, I'll let them, like, play with the ball in the house. But no, like, heavy, heavy play where they're panting and breathing hard at all. Um, and uh, what happened to Joseph, if that happens, it's like you got to get to the vet quick. Like, it's, it's that serious. Um, I don't know much about stomach flipping. Joseph, I don't know if you mind. Do you mind kind of, like, just... I don't want to ask this of you if it's... Obviously, it's going to be a very difficult situation. But I don't know if you can just type out quick 
signs and symptoms like from the time they're eating to the time the stomach flip like what happened that way you can educate us kind of on what to look for um like were they breathing hard like what were the signs that the stomach flipped i've never researched it just because it's i probably should because i basically i'm one of those people that research things that affect me um i always get people for example because i'm a videographer photographer like hey what's the best starter camera and it's like i don't know i don't i, I literally only know very in depth the camera gear that i would ever purchase if i'm never going to purchase like a starter camera i'm not going to waste my energy learning about a starter camera and like what's good what's not so same with dogs you know i've had dogs my whole life um a very very long time i've had a ton of experience with dog training a ton of experience with dogs a ton of experience with different issues with dogs um and i feel like that's why i'm so good at training dogs and understanding dogs mm -mm. let's see uh fiverr yeah no they're all garbage okay oh he blew out his acl yeah that's rough nancy that definitely sucks um so I'll rewind to a week ago, and we'll get down to the topic here. Um, it was a, what day was it? It was Saturday. What were we doing? I don't remember what Kara and I were doing, but it was later that evening. Bruce was fine the whole day. Bruce was absolutely fine. Um, we wanted to go get sushi, and, oh crap, I moved. I hope I didn't do something right there. We wanted to go get sushi, so Kara's like, uh, want to bring Bruce? Just leave him in the car. It wasn't a hot day out. Just to get him out for a ride and kind of get separated from justice. Just to make him feel special. Just for a car ride. Um, and just leave him in the car when he ate sushi. We park on the street and like where we sit is like 10 feet. Like we're right next to the window. We can see the car. Um, so I have no issue bringing Bruce, leave him in the car for 30 minutes while we eat. So he jumps in the car just fine. He was not limping at all that day. We get home. Kara pulls up in the driveway. I get out of the car to get Bruce out of the car. Um, I always typically either have him go down a ramp or I lift him out just to, just to prevent um, long-term buildup of, you know, hitting his joints in the ground, jumping out of the car. So I know it's not going to make a huge difference, but if you jump out of the car 10,000 times out of his life and I pick him out of the car those 10,000 times, right, it's like less impact on his joints essentially. Pick him out of the car. And he's limping all of a sudden. I'm like, dude, like you literally were not limping. And it's always really hard to tell what's, you can tell what side a dog is limping on. So he's limping on his left side, but was it his, was it his foot? Was it his hock? His hock is it the ankle joint. Was it the elbow or was it the shoulder? I don't know. So um, gave him some CBD and this is kind of what I'm giving him right now. It is called Head and Heel. Um, this is for large breed dogs. Um, give him some CBD. Um, let him chill. The next day we wake up and I woke up in the morning and like literally he could barely walk. His limp went from like a slight limp to like this where he's like dropping his whole like side of his body. I'm like, oh my God. Um, I had plans with Kara. Uh, she was running a 10 mile race. I wanted to bring him and Justice downtown. Um, it would have been a great video, a great experience for Justice with a large crowd. Great for the great for Bruce Wayne. I couldn't do it. Obviously, he couldn't walk. So, um, gave him more of the Head and Heel CBD. I took. I uh, started massaging around on Bruce, trying to figure out what exactly was hurt. So, I noticed when I was like squeezing, I squeezed his paw, nothing squeezed his um, hock ankle joint and he started to kind of like looking at me and like licking a little bit squeezed his forearm he was still kind of looking at me and licking you know then as I got up his elbow and shoulder he stopped so then because of his signs of he started just like kind of licking um, he wasn't like pulling away like in pain but that's kind of a sign that a dog could be stressed or hurt so I started doing this and he kept licking and I noticed between the two feet um, the hurt one had like barely, like not a lot of range of motion compared to the good one. I'm like, okay, I think it's his ankle joint and his hock joint. 
So I took an ace bandage and I couldn't wrap it. I couldn't wrap it around his foot that well because I didn't want it getting like stuck. I wanted to have some mobility, but I wrapped probably, if this was like the dog's foot, I probably wrapped through here. You can see it in the thumbnail, um, all the way up his leg and just like not crazy compressive because I've had like 30 ankle injuries after 20 plus years of skateboarding. And I know what it feels like to have an ace bandage after a while, like start cutting into your skin. So I wrapped it tight enough where it was giving him some um, pressure, but not too tight where it's going to irritate and cut into his skin. Um, very happy that he was very accepting of what I was doing. He wasn't trying to bite at it. He wasn't trying to pull it off. He just totally accepted it. So it was making it a little difficult for him to walk, but not too bad. So, um, Ace bandage, CBD, and just let him chill for the entire day. He just basically laid outside in the yard. He wasn't that active, and I kept Justice away from him. Justice knew something was going on. If you watch the video, you can see, like, Justice just kind of, like, scoot up to him and, like, because I have a video on him being hurt, um, and just kind of, like, you could tell the puppy was concerned about Bruce. Um, but for the most part, I was trying to make sure the puppy wasn't, like, up in his business trying to get him to play because even hurt, he still wanted to play. And um, as Nancy knows with Grimm, Corsos like to play. So I can't even imagine trying to deal with a blown out ACL, going through surgery, and then going through recovery for like probably six months, Nancy, I'm guessing. Six months. Um, that's rough. I need to do that for two days. So that was the protocol I did with Bruce. I was planning on taking him to the vet the next day. I woke up to him. Um, he didn't have an ace bandage on. I probably left it on like half the day, took it off, put it on again in the evening for a couple hours and took it off before I went to bed. I didn't want him sleeping with that. Um, and I woke up to him roughhousing with Justice, like actually slapping Justice with the hurt leg, right? So he went from barely limping, not limping at all, to I don't know what happened, to a slight limp. Because between not limping at all and getting a slight limp, he was literally just in the car. Um, to the next day, barely being able to walk, to the next day, seeming almost 100% again. Now, it's been a week. I still do not trust he's 100%. I'm still trying to be cautious with him, <coughs> but he's had no limp. And this is not the first time this has happened with this dog. Um, there's been so many times where he has been limping, and then the next day, not limping. I have seen him like run into like that red jolly ball he has, slip, yelp, fall on his shoulder, and then have like a limp for like three hours to then nothing. Um, as a puppy, the same thing. He would be playing, maybe get a slight injury, be limping for a day to nothing. Um, then there'd be times when he would seem he was in extreme pain to the next day, nothing. Two times, like I described in the front of the video, where um, I thought there was something seriously wrong, and it ended up being one leg growing faster than the other, and then a week later, nothing, because they evened out. These giant, heavy dogs, it, it's just such a high risk of injury. They weigh a lot. So there's a lot on their joints. Um, my entire yard... It's, it's not a flat yard. I've tried rolling it out in the spring when it's wet. It doesn't work. I basically need like a commercial roller to come in here and roll it out. But my entire yard is bumpy. Um, I feel it extremely because of my ankles just being so screwed up. When I walk in the grass, I can feel like every little divot. So what I think probably happened was he wasn't limping prior to getting in the car. But I'm guessing he probably was running around the backyard with Justice and like stepped in a little divot um, where the ground's uneven and like tweaked his ankle or tweaked his ankle like playing with the ball with justice like kind of like slightly rolled his foot because I've seen him like run and that foot fold over and he falls like a rolled ankle essentially. I'm assuming it's that which is why I assume it's not a hundred yet because I know what it feels like to have a rolled ankle. You may be able to walk fine but it's still not 100 for like a long time like a couple weeks. So I'm still being careful with him. I'm giving him um, head and heel actually sent me some treats for free, um, some CBD dog treats. So I've been giving these to actually Justice as well, just because I don't want to give one dog a treat, not the other, and Bruce. 
So um, I've, I've been giving him CBD treats as well, which um, pain-wise, he's been seeming, like I said, fine. Um, these do mellow out the dogs. That's for sure. It's definitely, it definitely mellows them out. So uh, I don't know if it's helping the pain. He can't talk and he hasn't been limping. Um, the previous CBD I was using by Pervitam, it was actually a company Kara and myself were involved with, is no longer anymore. And that was a human CBD. Um, there's zero THC in it. And I knew how it was manufactured, so I was very um, confident giving it to Bruce. And that like worked like magic all the time. Uh, so I used that for years. And it was, so I'm like a very big believer in CBD and injuries on dogs. Um, I know different brands are going to where their source may work differently. Um, like I said, this stuff will make them tired and mellow. Do I know if it's helping with pain? No, because uh, he's not really in a lot of pain. Where prior CBDs, I could tell like that day. Um, so I still need to give uh, more testing with this to see if it does reduce his pain levels. In general, CBD is going to reduce inflammation. Inflammation is good and bad. You need inflammation to recover. You need inflammation because it helps blood flow. But you don't want chronic inflammation like I have. Um, you don't want that chronically 24-7. That's when you run into issues. Um, but CBD does help reduce inflammation. Um, so I always suggest going the CBD route if your dog has an injury pri prior to going to the vet and getting like a pain medication. That's always like my last like resort um, would be getting a pain medication. I'd rather do something naturally. Um, give me a second. I want to drink some coffee. I'm trying to keep the slurping to a minimum since I have a lot of mic on. Uh, what I was also planning on doing to help Bruce Wayne's injury, I didn't do it because of the fact that he recovered, was I was going to use a heat pack on it, like a heat compress. Um, Moist heat is typically better than like a dry heat. Uh, you can get those like heat packs. I have one that you throw in the microwave for like a minute and then they're kind of like moist and warm. I was going to put that, that heat pack on his paw. I don't know if you can tell. It would have been that paw under his, under his, let me see if I back up if it gets in focus. It would have been this paw, which is bent currently under his chin. He's laying on it. He's obviously not in pain. Um, right, buddy? So I never ended up doing, <clears throat> I never ended up doing the heat pack, but, um, if he starts like feeling injured, like if he starts limping even a little bit, I'm going to start doing that. Um, I haven't yet, but that was what I was going to do. Luckily he just like miraculously like healed overnight, like Wolverine. Um, but this I, don't, I can't even count the amount of times where it seemed like Bruce Wayne was injured. And I'm like, oh my God, freaking out too. There's nothing wrong with him. It's just these big dogs, guys. It's just having that much weight. It's just so easy to get injured, especially how hard they play. It's not like he's just like tiptoeing around the backyard. He like plays hard. He runs hard. I let him out. He sees this red ball and he just like charges at that thing and like smashes into it. I don't even prompt him to do that. I prompt him to slow down. Um, so that's the update on Bruce. Um, like I said, if it comes back and if it's the hawk, the same exact spot he was hurt, I will bring him to the vet. I will have them. I'm going to have to basically tell them what I want them to do, which you have to do a lot of times with people, doctors, vet, vets, all of them. Um, I don't want him on pain meds. I would be like, First, he'd need an x-ray prior to getting an MRI. I don't know if, like, I don't even know where they would do an MRI. I'd have to probably go somewhere special for that for him. Because x-rays only show so, show, so, show so much. Um, so if he starts limping again, I'm going to push for an x-ray. If that doesn't show anything, I would push for an MRI. I do have pet insurance, so I'm not that worried about the cost of it because it should cover it. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm just monitoring and being careful. And unfortunately, now having two dogs that are going to be giant, they're going to be playing very hard. 
This isn't going to be the last injury. So, does anybody have any questions about the topic at hand, about dog injuries that I may or may not be able to answer for you? Let me know down below. And while, uh, before I start reading the comments, I just want to plug a few things. Um, you guys are so supportive. Thank you so much. You know, all the, the training courses you guys get through um, my links I have linked in the videos um, helps tremendously. I do get a cut of those, an affiliate pet, or I get an affiliate cut for each course sale. That's why I always ask you guys to use the link. Um, Will from Fenner just started something called the Will Atherton Academy, which is a completely different um, online course than you may think of. And I'm actually, go I'm actually involved with this. Uh, I'm going to be doing some courses, teaching some courses in this academy as well. I have, um, Lexi's going to put a, a link to that academy down below. And I'm going to really quickly, before I read these uh, comments, um, explain what it is. So what the Will Atherton Academy is, is it teaches you guys how to be a dog trainer. Like not just how to train your dog, but how to actually become a dog trainer. So when you get through this um, curriculum, you are going to be a dog trainer. Not only that, it teaches you like actually about dogs and dog psychology. It teaches you how to take your education of dog training and how to actually turn it into a business so you can leave your nine to five job and do what you want, do what you love, hang out with your hang out with dogs all day. Like it's not just like, all right, here's how to become a dog trainer. Bye. Peace. No, it teaches you how to like get clients, how to run your business, grow your business. Um, I'm going to be teaching courses on how to become, not become, but using yourself as an influencer to grow your business. Um, it's it's going to be great. Uh, he got that started about a month ago. So he's going to be continually adding education to that. I'm going to start filming courses. I'm going to start filming courses for it here in the next two to three weeks. Um, so link in the description, link in the chat box. Um, there's a free trial period, so no strings attached. You can cancel any time. Um, and I feel like it can go a long way for a lot of people. I'm just going to read these comments quick. Tina, I can turn up. Uh, I don't want to turn it up. It's like almost redlined. I'm like so close to being redlined. I don't want to blow out anybody's ears. Is it good giving raw meat five days a week? Good for dogs. That's all my dogs eat, dude, is raw meat. Every single day, every single meal. Um... So yes, it's very good. <laughs> Do you know what happened to Bruce make it hurt? Already discussed that. How old is Joey now? He's six months. I don't understand. Want to see give Jason a bath. I'm sorry, Roni Kumar. I don't understand what you're saying. No, Michael, never give a dog food off your plate. <laughs> That's going to be asking. The moment you give dog a food, the moment you take food off your plate and give it to your dog, guess what you just did? You just taught your dog that they should be begging for food because they're going to get food off your plate. Never, ever do something with your dog that you do not want to continue to do every single day of your life. And you got to be militant with that because the next day when they come up sitting next to you while you're eating your, your chicken, looking at you, but can I have a piece and you're getting pissed because they're staring at you begging for food. Well, you taught them to do that. Uh, 
Uh, Betty Daniel, you can keep the uh, religious stuff to yourself. Nobody cares if they've sinned against God. You give some advice or insight on your experience with Akita. Um, very different than the course, though. Um, very different response uh, when training them. They're very. They're a lot more stubborn. Corsos like to please their owner. That's just like a trait, which makes them easy to train if you know what you're doing. Uh, Akitas do not. Think of an Akita like a cat, right? You have a cat. Or I, even if you don't have a cat, like I've never had a cat, but you know the personality of cats, right? They're very independent. They don't want to be loved up on you. They don't want to be like lovey-dovey. Like, I mean, yeah, the, some cats like to cuddle, but they like to be their own being. And that's how Akitas are. They're nothing like a Corso. And they shed enormous amounts. Um, obviously, having them on the proper diet, like a raw diet, is going to reduce shedding, but there's no stopping shedding when it's shedding season. And talk about hair because of their undercoat. Like you can like brush and brush and brush them for a day straight and they'll just, this whole room would be filled with hair and they would still just look as hairy. Like it's insane the amount of hair that these guys have on them. Um, they have a super high prey drive. Uh, basically anything that came in the yard my Akita liked people, not animals. Anything that came in the yard didn't leave the yard. Um, he used to eat birds, foxes, rabbits. Uh, he ate an entire cat once. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> the, definitely a much harder dog to train than a, than a Mastiff. Every time my puppy play run, it scares me. I don't want her to have joint problems in the future. Um, I mean, free, I basically don't force puppies to run, kind of let them do it on their own. Um, you'll see, I have a video of taking Justice swimming for the first time, where yes, I was throwing a stick into the water so Bruce and him would go chase it. But running in water, um, where they actually have to, it's not the same impact as running on land. Um, but for the most part, like I wouldn't play fetch with Justice Outback, for example. Uh, so it sucks, but you also, on the same note, kind of have to let them be dogs and just kind of like monitor the play. Uh, don't play fetch with them. Uh, but I wouldn't worry too much if they're just running around in the backyard on their own. Joseph, yes, that's another good thing. They're definitely less needy. Akitas are definitely less needy than Corsos. Um, Corsos you need to spend a lot more time with. Um, like I was saying, and Nikita's more like a cat. They're like, all right, cool. You want to leave me alone all day? That's fine. They like, they like to watch you from a distance. We're like, for example, um, they're very loyal and protective. Uh, but where Bruce would like want to be sleeping on me or like right next to me looking at me, Nikita would probably be want to be like 10 feet away, just like eyes on me type deal. I wish there was time codes on these questions. Like Kathleen says, what part of him is injured and how many times has he injured it? Which I've already discussed, but I don't know if she asked that prior to me discussing or, or after, like joining late. So I'm not going to revisit that, but if you did miss it, Kathleen, uh, just when this video is done, just go back to the front of it. I go over that. That's what sucks about the chat box. It doesn't say like the time, like when people said something. Is it normal for them to be thirsty after eating? Only on a raw diet, no. On kibble, absolutely. Uh, you'll notice on 
If you're a kibble feeder and then go to raw, you'll be like, why does my dog barely drink water now? It's because the meat is so like saturated with moisture. So they don't need all that water. Where kibble is just dry processed food. They actually have to ingest water. You know when you put kibble in water and it expands? They need that to expand in their stomach to get pushed out. So a dog on kibble is going to drink like so much water to compare to a dog on raw. And um, even on raw, like he still pees a ton, even though he drinks far less water. So depends what you feed them. Libra Scorpio, I have two corsos. My boy Tyson is as large as Bruce. When he was a pup, he could not walk or lift himself up for six months. He cried constantly and was so worried. I took him to the vet. I took him to multiple vets. Yep, uh, that's one of the things I'm talking about. You know, they go through so many growing pains. These guys grow so fast. I remember personally having growing pains as a child. I can't imagine being a large breed dog where they're literally gaining two to five pounds a week. Justice averages around three and a half pounds a week. I'm thinking. Um, he is, I weighed him two days ago. He was 85 pounds, 84.6 pounds. Um, like I keep saying, he's not going to be as big as Bruce. People keep saying, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, and actually today I was looking uh, up something for a friend because um, he's got a Corso. His Corso is like 90 pounds and like two or three weeks younger than Justice. He's going to probably be like 170 pounds, I'm guessing. That's my guess. Um, but... So Justice is six months and a week old at 85 pounds, we'll say. And Bruce, let me see, I took a screenshot, at seven months, one week old, so four weeks older, was 104 pounds. So Justice is kind of on par with um, Bruce for weight, um, if you figure he gains three to five pounds a week. Um, but still, no, he's not going to be as big as Bruce. Bruce has, like, really thick, thick bones. Like, his forearm bones are just so thick and dense. Justice is more, like, tall and long. Uh, I think Justice is going to be taller than Bruce. Like, standing next, it's weird. When I look at Justice not around Bruce, Justice looks big. When I look at Bruce, Justice next to Bruce, he looks tiny. But yet he looks almost as tall as the Bruce already, which is crazy. Bruce is getting stoned off CBD treats. Willow man just coming in. What up, dude? Come here, bro. Come here. You want to say hi to everyone? Uh, let me see. Can you, see, where, you guys want to see Justice? Thumbs up this video if you want me to pick up Justice. I'm going to pick him up anyways and show you. I just want some thumbs up. Here, buddy. Oh, God. This is where you're big. Uh, uh, you look small to me. Do you think he's small, guys? Bro, why do you look so small to me next to Bruce? See, now he looks big to me. But next to Bruce, you look so small, buddy. All right, we'll just keep you here for a second. Just got to make sure you don't cover the mic. So this is my six-month-old puppy. He's getting very hard to um, take in and out of the car. So... I'm smart. Um, I wear a weight belt when I pick Bruce out of the car. If I don't use the ramp, I'm going to have to start wearing a weight belt for him. I keep one in the car because I lift five days a week, so I just throw it on quick. But getting him in the car, what I do is I have him, like, he goes in the in the tailgate section, in the back section. So I have him, like, hop up and, like, put his paws up, and then I'll just lift his back end up and let him um, scoop himself up. Say hi to your brother. Where's your buddy? Say hi. Cool. I'm going to put him down now. And poor Justice went swimming yesterday. And guess what happened? The lake water got him. The dude's been crapping his pants since yesterday. I'm like, oh my God. He had diarrhea all day yesterday. Kara wakes up this morning to a crate filled with diarrhea. Um, and then I f gave him some, oops, Pepto-Bismol this morning. Yeah, dogs can have Pepto-Bismol. Uh, we didn't go to the gym with the dogs. I got home. He pooped again, and it was uh, 
it was turd like, but it was it was like soft turd like. Sorry, I gotta fix this. So he was done the diarrhea, um, and I'm just gonna keep monitoring his poops. But same thing happened with this dude. This dude drinks lake water if he's not used to it, and it's so hard when your dogs are out swimming to like not have them drink water. Like like oh water, I'm gonna drink it. So I'll tell them no, and they'll stop, but they still you know ingest it. Same thing with him. Gives him the poops, which sucks. Uh, so hopefully next time we go, his body will be a little bit more adapted to it. Lake water and he won't get the poops because it really sucks. Joseph says larger con courses have joint and bone issues. They can't work like the standard breed ones. That is highly incorrect. Uh, I highly respectfully disagree with you, Joseph. That'd be like saying every large person on the planet, because they're large, has bone issues and joint issues. That's not the case. That's just fake news. Um, that's such a blanket statement. Can they have more issues than a dog without, oh, why are you half on, half off? You're being weird, bro. Can they have more issues than a dog that's not as large boned? Of course. But every large breed dog with large bones is not going to have issues. Um, so I disagree with that statement. Did you ever, Libra Scorpio, did you ever figure out what was wrong or did it just go away? I'm guessing it just went away. I'm guessing it was a growth thing because, like I said, these guys get so many growing pains. Oh, here we go. The conclusion of the final vet was that he was just going to be a really huge boy. Thankfully, when he turned one year old, he was up and at it, and sure enough, he had grown to a beast. Yeah, that's that's typical, you know. They'll grow, they'll get limps. They, uh, and it, it could be like a multitude of things. It could be growing pains. It could be just like stepping down wrong. Like I said, my yard's like filled with divots. So even like if he's running and there's like a slight dip, that elbow, you know, he wouldn't expect, he'd expect the ground to be here, but it may be here. So he like overextend his arm type deal. Could be a million things. But Libra Scorpio, I'm glad your boy turned out to be good. Uh, so Tiffany's in regards to bloat, restlessness, pacing, swollen or distended abdomen. I knew that one. Painful abdomen. Knew that one. Overall look of distress, attempting to vomit with no success. Didn't know that one. Excessive drooling, rapid breathing, inability to stand. Now Bruce is underneath me. Do you think it is his weight? No, it's not his weight. He got hurt. <laughs> plain, like, plain and simple. Like everyone, everyone likes to overthink things. He got hurt. <laughs> Just like you could walk outside and roll your ankle. He got hurt. Yeah, he's definitely not oversized, Joseph. Um, he's larger than the average, yes, but not oversized. And he still it would even be, uh, he would still not be out of um, running if I wanted to. If he was a show dog, 155 wouldn't still be out of the running. Um, his brother is massive. His brother's like 190. Uh, so, yeah, he'd be out of the running. Oh, just today, Nancy, huh? So, Nancy's a uh, courser that had a uh, ACL tear. Was rest for two and a half months, then surgery. 
And then today they can start doing five minutes of leash walking. Now, how long was it from surgery until today? Brett, he definitely does not look like he's on steroids. I wonder if dogs can get subluxation. It's where stress causes some stupid injury for seemingly no reason physically. I have to have to look into that. I've never heard of subluxation. Again, Joseph, I disagree. 125 is the max to retain working ability and health. Like you're just putting like a blanket statement on something. Um, not true. Again, I'll go back to humans. Because somebody's larger doesn't mean they have good health or have the ability to be crazy athletes. You see some NFL players that are like 280 pounds and they're insane athletes. It amazes, me, it amazes me how they respect, adore, and worship the both of you with all the dogs that are mauling their owners in news nowadays. Do you think about that at all? No. Um, that be, That's due to a multitude of factors. And I would guarantee the only... Raising a dog like I did, the only way that would happen is if you legit have uh, a dog with a mental instability issue. No, I have not checked him for OCD. He does not have OCD. <laughs> Again, everyone's like literally like over analyzing this. He got hurt. He rolled his ankle somehow. I guarantee that's what happened. Bro, what are these comments? Bruce Wayne is perfectly fine size wise. He. He is a large dog, of course, but that is the breed and his genetics, yes. You're going to get corsos, some that are 90 pounds, some that are 150 pounds. That's, that's the Mastiffs. They are large dogs. Yeah, Joseph, he tore his ACL, but it doesn't mean it was because he was 150 pounds. Like, again, like, you, you, you're simplifying it too, like, far too much, bro. Like, far too much. If he tore his ACL at 150, why couldn't he have torn it at 130? Um, if, if he's not fat. Uh, if he's, like, super fat and overweight, that's one thing. But it's typically if you have the muscle... Typically, if your dog's not fat, it's going to have the muscle to support the joints, which is why it's so important to keep your dog well-muscled and well-exercised, especially, like, their back end. Um, their back end, as they get old, is the first thing to go. So, like, uh, good exercises for dogs. Obviously, swimming is probably the, the best thing you can do if you can get your dog to swim. Um, no pressure on the joints. But another good thing is um, walking hills, running hills, like, uphills, not down, like, up. Because that really works the muscle, really works their back end. You really want to keep that back end nice and strong. Brett, have you actually ever seen a dog in steroids? I'm just not sure if you're being a troll, if you're just ignorant to the fact or not.
Brett has a male core, so 50 pounds at five months. He'll probably be around 80 pounds full grown, 90 pounds, my guess. No, not 80, probably like 90 to 100. But probably more like 90, 95. Full masses are awesome. Uh, we actually looked into getting one, um, but due to the health issues, we went with the Corso. Um, Will, my friend Will, had a bull mastiff, Roxy. Um, she was amazing. It was like his one-in-a-lifetime dog. And Brett, what's your dog's name? Your puppy's name? I actually want to look something up quick before I forget. I'm going to share something with you guys if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. A video you guys might like. Sorry here, guys. That's quiet. Where is it? Ah, I gotta find this video. I think it's in my text messages, actually. Where's my phone? Messages from the web. Let me, uh, I can find a video to post for you guys that you guys would probably like. Let me just, um, I gotta get up from my text messages on my phone. So I'm gonna pair it so I can just copy and paste. And I should be able to find it quickly. Uh, where is my breeder? You guys keep each other entertained the t chats while I uh, find this. Just take me a second. Is this it? No, it's not it. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm actually going to be doing an interview with this guy. So I'm going to put this in the, actually, I can't put it in the chat right now. So Lexi, I'm going to text you a link. Can you put this link in the chat for me? And what the video that Lexi is going to post in the chat box for me is, uh, a judge's education seminar um, for Carne Corsos. Um, he kind of goes over, it's an hour long, he goes over the breed, their history, all that stuff. So you guys may enjoy it. I will be, uh, I was hoping to have it do it already, um, an interview, but life has been busy, so I haven't had a chance to yet. But we talked on the phone and we will make it happen. All right, let me get back to these. Yeah, Libra Scorpio, I always, like, even in my video yesterday that I shot, taking justice for the first time, somebody dug, like, in the sand, like, a hole this deep, 
So I'd like, I'm like, I'm covering this up so my dog doesn't get hurt. I'm like so proactive with that. Ah, uh, Roberta, nothing like leaving work early, right? Start your weekend early. Well, actually, today is only Thursday, not Friday. Cynthia Weber, I, we love you, Corey Crew. Thank you very much. Do you have a lot of other courses around you? Would you be able to host a meetup for other owners of course of dogs? Um, no, I wouldn't host a meetup. And no, there's not a lot of courses around me. I've been asked to host meetups before. I don't have time for that. And then if I'm not feeling good, I'd be like, I'm not going to go. I'm canceling. <laughs> so <laughs> just wouldn't work out for me in my life. No, Kathleen, that is not just masking the pain. That's what pain medication would do. Got something in my teeth? I do, thanks bro. I have a blueberry in my teeth. See PJ's looking out for me. The rest of you guys aren't telling me I got something in my front teeth. Thanks PJ. Libra, give me advice on why my corso doesn't like to drink water out of his bowl. He usually wants to drink out of a flowing from a faucet or water hose. Uh, I've never seen that before. Um, try switching the bowls out. Give him colder water. Give him filtered water. Um, put ice in his bowl. See if that works. He may not like, depending on what you're feeding him out of a plastic bowl, um, plastic always ends up getting bacteria in it and it has that weird taste to it. So switch to like a ceramic bowl would be my, ceramic is like the way to go for, for water bowls. Um, and keep them clean all the time. We give Bruce, uh, we have two bowls for the dogs, Bruce and Justice. Um, we give them filtered water out of the fridge. Like we just hold the bowl and the fridge water thing so it's filtered. Yeah, I gave him rice this morning. He didn't have the poop saw after he ate this morning. I gave him rice and yogurt and chicken. I didn't boil the chicken though, but pretty uh, light in the fat. Uh, my female, of course, was 10 months old, and she's 98 pounds now at 10 months old. How much pounds was Bruce? I don't know, but at I just looked today. At 7 months old, he was 104 pounds. Because I literally just looked this morning. 7 months, 1 week, he was 104. We have a Brindle Corso. We love your vids. They helped us understand him more, and you were right. We totally changed our lives. Glad you do revolve around him. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that.
Misfit M, I had a cat do that at four kilograms. Blame her? Is that to blame on her weight too? <laughs> kind of ex exactly my thought process too. You know, every, everything's not due to weight. Injuries happen. I'm only 145 pounds. I've uh, rolled my ankle, hurt my ankle 20 plus times, two surgeries. Is it because I'm overweight or large bone? I'm not overweight or large bone. And sometimes it's just genetics. Sometimes people are just more prone to get hurt more than others. Um, any sports fans out there, your favorite, you may have a, a sports person that you really like, an athlete, and they're just more prone to injury. Some people are just built more durable. Some people are built different, um, where they can, their body can take more punishment without actually getting injured. Um, so there's, there's so many factors into it. It's not just weight or bone size. But you do need to be careful when they're growing. That's fact. Because of the large size, you don't want them growing too fast. So I'm glad we have Justice on Raw from the start. Bruce Wayne wasn't on Raw until eight months old. So I'm so happy that Justice is on Raw from the very start. Keeps the weight uh, a more steady growth, a little bit slower. on oh, these little batteries suck so all right we're back so we got a uh, big dude and little dude battery died my light shut off what's going on here it's craziness 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 trying to get through these comments and now why is it so bright there you go see the little batteries behind me Any poop, any, any tips for getting a new puppy to stop eating poop? Yes, correct them the moment they do it. Meaning you gotta be outside with them 24 seven. See, let's use Nancy as an example. Grim tore his 120 pounds. The orthopedic surgeon said he was in excellent shape. See, like injuries happen, guys. It's not OCD. It's not like he's too big. Um, it's not, like, you can make an excuse for anything and injuries happen. These dogs are physical dogs. These dogs play hard. Um, like when these guys play together, it's sometimes it sounds like they're killing each other. Um, Yet they're not, and they're just having fun. And when Bruce runs, it's like always like, uh, he's just like running so hard, like I've explained, it always like stresses me out. Bruce Spears have a lot of bone mass and healthy muscle for sure. He's not overweight. Yep, Libra Scorpio. His like bones are just so dense, like way more dense than Justice's are. Just like thick boned.
And just so you know, Lexi did post that video for you guys to see. Um, you guys may find it interesting. I enjoyed it. I Takes me forever to get through the comments. Hey, Will's here. What up, buddy? What is up, dude? How you doing? This is mushrooms. That's awesome. Yeah, chiropractic uh, can help dogs a ton. Um, you just got to make sure your dog's okay with getting adjusted. Essentially, I'm huge. I do a lot of massage work on Bruce. Um, I haven't this week, but I've had videos on it. I will give him massages. Um, you know, just work out like all the muscles, especially his neck, his 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 joint areas. Just keep everything loose. Should probably stretch him as well. Oh, Roberta, you do have a long weekend. You get Fridays off. Nice. Nice, nice. Early, early weekend. I hope you have a, hope you're going to have a good weekend. Where's Bruce and Justice right now? Bruce and Justice. Wait, no. Justice, I don't know where he went. Bruce is right here. He was on the couch, but he got down. Yeah, Justina, Justice left the room. Did Bruce Wayne ever get je jealous of Justice? I would watch the front videos like the start of the the daily videos i was doing when we got justice um jealous no not liking him or not sharing what's going on absolutely i knew exactly how it was going to play out too exactly and it played out exactly like i thought I don't, it wasn't really a jealousy thing though Bruce on alert, what body language does he display? His tail's up, ears are up, he's kind of like head movement maybe a little bit quicker, um, that type of thing. You can just tell. It's like if I'm sitting here now just chilling and I see something outside, I'd be like kind of the same thing. Oh, also, I'm not sure, um, when the battery in the camera dies, sometimes it throws off where it looks like I'm dubbed over, my mouth doesn't match. There's nothing I can do to fix that. It happens when the battery in the camera dies. No, I'm just seeing that now, after I said that, out of sync. It's going to stay out of sync, bro. Just pretend you're watching a uh, kung fu movie. Oh, yep. Lexi just said the battery, the audio goes out of sync when the battery dies. Correct. Uh, so, Libra Scorpio, I'll give that a try. I do keep it clean regarding the water bowl, but I think his bowl is made of plastic because it's a con grip bowl, giant and black. The sun here in Cali does seem to warm up the water. Yeah, give him cold water. Get rid of that 
plastic bowl because all those chemicals just are not good. Just go ceramic. Not even stainless steel. Go ceramic. Um, clean it every day. So what? Have multiple. Like have like two or three. Um, throw in the dishwasher every day. Give them a fresh bowl every morning. So hopefully that'll help. And also the more you like. It's kind of like feeding your dog when they get picky. If you start giving into that pickiness, they're always going to be picky. I promise you, you don't give your dog anything other than that bowl of water. That dog is going to drink that bowl of water. He, that dog is not going to let themselves um, die of dehydration. The dog will drink the water eventually. Jason, can you give your opinion on complete ground raw food only for a county core, so chicken quarters, kidney, liver, beef hearts? Um, no, I don't recommend any um, raw food companies because I don't know any. I just literally do everything myself. Um, so I am not aware of any dog food companies to help you out with that. Be careful also, uh, be careful only giving distilled water. I would not recommend only giving distilled water. Right, Kung Fu movie, right Lexi? Lever, a lot of dogs do eat poop. I don't, I don't know why, but they do. Um, that's why you gotta like literally, you can't correct something unless you're actually there to correct it. So I said like if your dog's eating poo poo, you need to be there, have them on leash, give them, give them uh, corrected, uh, get it corrected the moment they try. If you'd like to speed up that process, have them on a leash, bring them around poop and kind of like set them up to try to eat it so you can correct it. That's another thing to do. Uh, that could work. Um, you could try this. I So just like I'm telling you, correct it, the dog, but you have to be present to correct the dog, right? Justice likes to eat dirt. I can't correct him eating dirt unless I'm outside. I don't want to be outside 24-7. I just don't. I can't because of the sun. It'll give me rashes. So I'm like, all right, what can I do other than stand at the window and like bang on the window every time he goes to eat dirt, which works. Um, but that literally requires me standing at the window all the time. I took non-toxic dish soap, made sure there's nothing toxic in it, nothing toxic for dogs, and literally squirted a ton of soap, dish soap, in every spot, like dirt spot that he would eat. He stopped eating dirt. So you could basically try that um, with poop. But the thing is with poop, it has a different smell than dirt. So... It could smell like it could still be enticing to them. I don't know. But you could try doing that. You could even spray apple, that bitter apple spray on the poop um, when the dog's not around. See if they'll go out and eat it and then they, oh, I don't ever want this again. That's another way to correct it without you actually being there. Lucid mushrooms, I agree. In my opinion, Mastiffs are the most intelligent breed of dogs. There isn't a planet. There is no better dog to have part of your life. Yes and no. So I don't know if Will's still in here. Will, if you're in here, um, voice your opinion on this. So Will's had a Corso. Currently has an English Mastiff. He's had a Bull Mastiff, Roxy. Um, when he was here visiting, he told me the English Mastiff isn't the brightest. And I already knew that. English Mastiffs aren't known for their intelligence. Um, but Will is saying how he feels like Corsals are one of the smartest breeds on the planet. Even compared to the Bull Mastiff, um, he was saying how much more... I don't have experience with a Bull Mastiff at all. Um, but he was saying that he, he like the intelligence between a Corsal and a Bull Mastiff is still greater. So, uh, Lucid Mushrooms, I just... Uh, yes and no, depending on what breed we're talking about of Mastiff. But uh, Corsals are super intelligent, which is part of the reason why... Um, Joseph had four Akitas, and he said Mastiffs take a lot more attention. I think that's why. They just require so much more attention because they're so much more human-like. Um, but they are an amazing breed. Libra definitely gives their dog massages. 
Yeah, isn't like uh, Bruce loves his paws massage, and a lot of dogs don't like their paws touch. Both him and Justice love their paws touch, but you got to figure they're so heavy. Like these dogs are heavy, so a lot of pressure in their paws. So just like if we're out walking all day long, our feet get sore. I guarantee these guys' feet get sore, so they probably like a foot massage every now and then. Oh, your butcher does all the mixing grinding. That's amazing. No, it's not bad. Um, I mean, I always prefer to, Cynthia, I always prefer to feed whole, not ground, but I feed ground, I feed ground as well. Um, the reason why, there's less chance of contamination when you feed whole. Um, anything that goes through that machine to grind it up, depending on how it's cleaned, could have uh, contaminated from something else. It's going to contaminate your meat. When you grind meat, it doesn't last as long because now there's more of it uh, exposed to the air. It can go bad quicker. Um, like I said, I feed ground, but I much prefer like whole food, like steaks. Um, I, you can still cut them up, but I prefer them not ground. But it's still a zillion times better than kibble. Um, and like I said, I, I feed ground as well. It's easier sometimes. It's more affordable, more cost efficient. Um, and as you know, it's so expensive to feed these dogs. Roberta, that's false information. You'll also hear people say that about dirt. You'll also hear them say that about grass. Um, all false. Just one of those myths. Uh, you've used a massage chair in your dog. That is amazing. I would love to see that. All right. I'm about to finish this up, guys. If anybody has any last minute questions, throw them up quick. We'll do like a rapid fire. I will go through them as quick as possible. Um, if you have no other questions, that is cool too. Um, I'll let you guys put those in the chat box quick. Oh, can I say something in this one? I can, I can open the chat box in a separate window from YouTube, not Streamlabs, and I can type in that. No problem on your the uh, the ground food comment. Folgers coffee? Oh no, I couldn't do Folgers coffee, bro. It's uh, I either do like the Starbucks cold brew. Um, we buy like the forty ounce bottles of it because it's way more cost efficient. Kara drinks that. I have really bad reflux, so I go with a low acidity coffee, which is a Utica low acidic coffee, which I brew in the cold brew and have that. Tony, Bruce is all fixed up, bro. He's good to go. Noah, when should I get another Corso? My pup's eight months. Wait till yours is fully, um, fully trained like really well trained and I say that because it'll just make training the puppy like 10 times easier like justice is light years ahead of Bruce in training and I feel like I I almost feel lazy like <laughs> I didn't even work hard training him um I trained him like I did Bruce but it just came along so much with less effort because of the fact we had Bruce so basically the puppy picks up on what Bruce does when I command Bruce so my suggestion you could get one now um the puppy would probably love a playmate, but I'd wait a year because a year from now, you're going to A, have more experience with the breed, unless you've already had them. Um, B, your Corso, hopefully, is going to be fully obedience trained at a high level, meaning it's going to be so much easier to train that puppy. So once you get through those annoying like first couple months of puppyhood, where it's like super annoying because... You have to have uh, literally, uh, like right now, I don't know where Justice is. I'm not worried about him. Two months ago, it's like, where's Justice? Is he eating something? Is he chewing something? Which he's still a puppy. He's only six months old. I wouldn't leave him to roam free at all. But when I'm home, I, I pretty much trust him. Um, so those first couple months are always rough because it's literally nonstop eyes on the dog. 
Um, but yeah, wait till your dog's uh, fully, like a year and a half old, fully obedience trained, and just having the puppy would just make life so much easier for you, dude. Karma's hiding underneath the bed. She's afraid, and you need to work on that with her. You need to figure out what she's scared of and work through that with her. Aaron, I, had, I tried raw for my pup, followed the directions from the raw food masterclass. My pup lost so much weight it was scary. I had to transition back to homemade food. Then that just means you had to up their food. Calories in versus calories out always. That's just the, you know, nothing's going to be identical for two dogs. It's all just, um, all just guidelines. One dog that's 50 pounds versus another dog that's 50 pounds could have two huge discrepancies in how much they have to eat. For example, Bruce's brother, uh, is like 190, was up at the 190, 200. Um, Bruce... Growing was eating more than the, than him. I think Bruce right now eats more than him. You know, different metabolisms, different rates of metabolism, all that plays in. So if your dog is losing weight, you just got to up the calories. Just like you and I, if we're not eating enough, we're going to lose weight, up the calories. Rottweiler versus Conde Kors, which is best? Prince, I'm never answering this question ever. It's just, they're weird questions. <laughs> There's no best. Our course of developed weak past, pastern due to immune mediated responses, conjunctivitis, steroids helping the issues. Any recommendations for improving weak, past, weak pasterns? I don't know what weak pasterns are, dude. What are pasterns, Tony? Let me Google that. Let me Google that, see if I can help you out. What are pasterns in a dog? A rear pastern. So the rear pasterns is the point of the hawk downward to the tarsal bones of the foot. Briefly, the pasterns are the dog's shock absorbers for the body. Bear in mind that the forequarters are responsible for supporting more than half the dog's weight. No, no idea how to strengthen that, dude. Um, other than, uh, other than um, walking, light walking, like, Tony, don't have your dog, like, running hard or anything like that. Just like humans... If we have an injury, what do we do? We, we limp and we, um, we compensate. And when you compensate, our gaits change when we walk. And if we're injured for a very long time with a compromised gait, it's going to affect, like let's say I hurt my right ankle. So I'm limping. It's going to affect my knee. It's going to affect my back. It's going to affect my hip. It's going to affect my other knee. So what I would suggest is um, kind of like PT work. Uh, anything that can build up that joint, such as just like light walking, making sure the dog's like walking properly. Um, don't overdo the walking because once they get tired, they're going to start, they already have like an issue in their ankle joint, right? So they're, they're going to start compensating really quick because that joint's going to get tired. That muscle's going to get tired quicker. So keep like the walks, uh, short, do them multiple times a day, walk them, up hills, down hills, very slow. Don't let them sprint around. Don't let them run around for a while. I don't know how severe the injury is, how like long this happened to go. Um, but basically, easy exercise, slowly building up over time how much exercise you do. Um, just to strengthen that, that foot. And make sure they're walking right. Like make sure they're not like, if this is the ground, make sure they're not dragging their foot, you know? I didn't even know what the hog joint was called when um, Tony, before he uh, injured it. I'm like, I know it's called something that's not an ankle joint. So I had to like look that up.
I do not advise giving them feeding them chickens that way. Just be um, the prey model diet, for example, like the straight. I feed Franken prey, but the prey model diet, people would like throw their dog a complete chicken, like complete chicken. Um, Bruce is probably going to start barking if he hears the mailman. Um, Feathers and all. The dog will eat everything. Um, but if your dog's going to, same with rabbits, I've seen people throw their dog a rabbit, like fur and all. Bruce wouldn't touch that, neither would Justice. Um, but yeah, feeding whole chicken's fine. Just be careful of their, how do I say it? I always like to feed appropriate size bones for the dog. So, for example, when I feed Justice chicken wings, I don't like... I break the chicken wing so that like round knobby job, that bone, he's not eating it and I throw that, I rip that bone out and throw it out and just give him the rest of it. As long as your dog's not like having any issues, um, you know how they, like the bones that they eat, it should be fine. Yeah, Cynthia. <laughs> Everyone's like ahead of me in the chat. I say something and then scroll down two questions and then like Cynthia just goes, I feed my whole my corso a whole small rabbit. They won't splinter, Trent. As long as they're not cooked, they won't splinter. Oh, I, I just missed that. Yep, whole chicken bones are good. Yep. Sorry, Trent. The chat box moved on me. No, Libra, they won't. Um, poultry bones are super pliable, like super pliable. Um, the moment you heat them up, they splinter. So just as Trent said, don't heat up those bones. Don't warm them up in the microwave. Don't put them in hot water. Just like straight up raw bones, you're good to go. You're good to go. No fur. No, they don't fight. If they do, I'll tell them to stop. They will listen to me even in like crazy commotion situations. So I don't have an issue for that. Like when I speak, they both stop. Um, I've established that role as the leader, um, which is like very important to do when you have like a large breed dog like this. I hope he doesn't hear that. I don't want him like barking like all crazy. But yeah, so if they started fighting, I would just yell stop and they would stop. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining the uh, kind of, uh, Coffee and Courses Live. Super appreciate it. Sorry, just reading a couple more things here. Um, we will be back with In the Doghouse with the Corys. That's me and Kara on, let me see, today's the 12th. I'd say the 22nd, but Kara's out of town that weekend. So we'll be back live the 29th with In the Doghouse with the Corys, May 29th, which means I will probably do a live coffee and courses on a Thursday on the 26th of May. Well, I like to do one live a week. I alternate between this one and then the one with my wife. Like I said, she's out of town the week that we would typically do it, so I'll probably throw in one of these on a Thursday. I didn't, even, I didn't even hear Bruce Wayne get up. He snuck out of here for me. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining. Have an amazing weekend. It's almost Friday. Um, come here, buddy.